uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the uh, invitation and uh, uh, warm welcome. And um, um, it's my uh, great honor to um, have this opportunity to speak in uh, symplectic zoominer. Um, okay, so today I'm going to talk about a recent uh, joint work with uh, Shao Yun by on, on constructing uh, um, some integer valued. Uh, from a written type invariance uh, for symplectic for general symplectic manifolds. So uh, the outline of uh, uh, my talk is given on this page. So I will first review the uh, construction of form of weight invariance in symplectic geometry, uh, especially uh, on the role of uh, virtual fundamental cycles. And, and in second, in the second part, I will uh, um, introduce the idea of Fukai and Ono, uh, who uh, propose proposed to use a particular kind of perturbation scheme called a normally polynomial perturbation to uh, define um, uh, integer counts of curves um, for all you know, general symplectic manifolds. And uh, in part three, I will, uh, um, 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 I will um, discuss this, uh, um, the idea of what actually we, we did uh, in realizing Fukai Ono's idea in the, in the level of uh, differential topology. Um, and as an application, we actually uh, constructed this integer, uh, integer valued counts of curves in genus zero. And, and, the, and the part four is a technical part, if, you know, depending whether I, have, I will have uh, time or not, um, I will discuss this uh, very crucial uh, condition of uh, some kind of transversality condition, which uh, allows us to, to produce those integer uh, invariants or integer uh, uh, cycles. All right. So, um, okay, so let's first uh, start with uh, the uh, classical um, form of weighting variants and how they're constructed. Okay. So, um, so let's first affix a, um, a compact, a compact symplectic manifold and a compatible almost complex structure, J. So let's fix all, all this data and also fix um, the, uh, the homology class, uh, integral homology class, which uh, will be the degree of the curves and also the genus and the uh, uh, number of mark points who are, uh, which are both uh, non-negative uh, integers. So then we will have this moduli space of stable maps, um, uh, MGN bar uh, X comma J comma A. Um, so those are just the genus G, uh, uh, J holomorphic stable maps um, from, uh, um, you know, into, into the target X, uh, whose degree is uh, prescribed by this degree A. But we know this is a, a compact and uh, house or uh, moduli space, but also it has the uh, sort of a stack structure. That means any point which can be represented by a stable map uh, then the stable map may have non-trivial automorphisms. And the stability condition implies that the, the automorphism groups will be finite. So you can think of this as some, some sort of orbifold or something worse than orbifold because it might be singular. And nonetheless, on this moduli space, there are two uh, natural maps. The first one is the evaluation map, which just evaluate every stable map at the position of the n mark points. So it is a continuous map uh, to x to the nth power. And another map is the stabilization map, which is just forget the uh, map and uh, keep the domain. However, the domain might be unstable. So you, need, you possibly need to stabilize the domain. So then this map is defined, is, is a continuous maps into this uh, daily Mumford space of uh, genus G n marked uh, uh, complex curves. So, so the gram of weight and invariants are basically uh, in symplectic geometry defined uh, via the virtual fundamental class. Uh, and, and we know that there are two parallel stories. One, one is in algebraic geometry and the other is in symplectic geometry whose, you know, in which, in which uh, the definition of the virtual fundamental class are very different. Um, in symplectic geometry, what you do is some, you construct some cycle which is not exactly or at least one, the, 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 the classical way to do that is to construct some, some, some uh, fundamental cycle, which is uh, not exactly contained in the moduli space, but like close to the moduli space. And then you can use the evaluation map and the stabilization map to push forward 
this uh, for fundamental cycle to uh, this uh, product x to the nth power times the Dunning Mumford space. And then this push forward cycle uh, represents a well defined uh, homology class. Uh, in general, it is a, a rational homology class. So the, this class will be uh, called the virtual fundamental class, and it is uh, independent of various choices. And then using this homology class, you can you can do intersection theories with cycles in both uh, the target manifold X as well as cycles inside the Dunning Mumford space, and you can cook up in, uh, rational numbers. So those are uh, form of weighting invariants. And um, morally, they these numbers will tell you how many curves there are uh, satisfying certain constraints. But it's, it's very important to keep in mind that classically the form of weight invariants are rational bad. And the, the, the reason is just because there are contributions from stable curve, stable maps, which have non-trivial automorphism groups. So this feature will be uh, uh, discussed uh, again and again in this, in this talk. All right. So, so let's let's just look at this construction more carefully and look at how how this uh, virtual fundamental cycle is is, is defined. So, um, so the general idea is called a finite dimensional reduction, or at least one way to do that. Um, and uh, and uh, and uh, I will choose to use uh, Fukai Ono's uh, um, notion of the Kranichi chart to 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 uh, to introduce this idea of. Uh, uh, or review this construction uh, using finite dimensional reduction. So, so let's just abbreviate this uh, M bar, abbreviate the moduli space by M bar. And uh, a Kranichi chart on this moduli space is a, is a, is a tuple which contains uh, five elements where G is a finite group and U is an is a open uh, G manifold. Uh, w is uh, a representation space of this finite group G, which is also uh, called the uh, obstruction space. Obstruction space. And S is an equivalent map uh, from the manifold U to the obstruction space W. So you can you can you can look at this um, this uh, notion from this diagram. So you have a you have a manifold U acted by this finite group G, and you have a representation space W also acted by G, and you have a map which is equivalent. So then in this inside U, there is the zero locus, and this is a G invariant set, and you can mod out by this group action G. And then the last element inside the Kranichi chart is a, is a continuous map from this uh, um, zero locus divided by G into this um, moduli space of stable uh, maps, and we require that this map is a homeomorphism onto an open subset. So um, the idea is basically like locally, uh, the moduli space is cut out by a um, uh, elliptic partial differential equation. And because of uh, Fred Holm theory, you can actually reduce the partial differential equation into uh, to finite dimensions so that the solution space is locally is actually um, uh, the same as a the zero locus of some uh, 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 map into a finite from a, a finite dimensional manifold to a finite dimensional vector space. However, you in general you need to divide by this uh, local symmetry group, which is uh, could be non-trivial. So 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 using this chart, you can do the following thing using this notion. So. So this is the general procedure. You can actually cover this moduli space by the usually finitely many Kranichi charts uh, because we have compactness. Um, so, so also let, let's just abbreviate this, uh, let's just suppress this notion, uh, this element from now on. So we just uh, um, implicitly assume that there will be this uh, um, homeomorphism between the zero locus divided by G with the open set of the moduli space. Let's just denote this uh, Kranichi chart by using four elements. So we can cover this whole moduli space by uh, finitely such charts. And on overlaps, we, will, we need to define some notion of coordinate change. 
But nonetheless, you can actually cover this whole moduli space by using the uh, local pieces, which are the zero locus of S alpha divided by the local symmetrical G alpha. So this is an ident identification. And this whole thing, this moduli space is also contained in the union of all those charts divided by the symmetry group. So, so you can think uh, the right-hand side as some, some sort of uh, uh, virtual neighborhood. Okay. So then how to define the virtual fundamental class? So um, if we're lucky that all those maps as alpha are transversal to the zero, to the origin of the obstruction space, then we know that locally uh, the moduli space looks like a, a, a manifold divided by a symmetry by a finite group. Then the man, then the moduli space will be an orbifold, and hence it carries a, a fundamental class. And uh, a priori, this fundamental class is rational, um, and its its degree is equal to the so-called virtual dimension, which is. Um, The dimension of the space U minus the rank of the um, the obstruction space. Um, but this is rarely the case. In general, some alpha may not be transverse. So if some alpha is not transverse, then we have to uh, do some perturbation. So we hope to be able to slightly perturb every S alpha in a, in a compatible way so that you can achieve transversality. So that, but if you perturb them, then the then the then the loc zero locus will be shifted a little bit, um, but will hopefully still contain in the virtual neighborhood. And then there will be something inside the virtual neighborhood which support a, a fundamental class, and and because those Kronichi charts are defined geometrically, the evaluation maps and the stabilization maps are still defined, extended to the virtual neighborhood. Then you can still push forward this uh, perturb cycle into the target manifold as well as the Benny Mumford space. And you can define this uh, uh, virtual fundamental class. And you can prove that this class will be independent of the choice of the perturbations and, and so on. Um, and however, in general, there will be obstructions to achieve uh, equivalent transversality by using, um, um, let's see single value perturbations. And we will actually see this uh, uh, um, uh, problem uh, in, in, in a moment. So, so then how to achieve transversality? Then we can use multi-value perturbations. We just uh, doesn't, we can consider uh, perturbations which has multiple branches and each single branch doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to uh, respect the symmetry. However, as a whole collection, um, the multi-value perturbation has to uh, 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 respect the symmetry. But if you increase the number of uh, branches, then you increase the the chance to to have zeros. Then uh, to actually get a well-defined uh, uh, cycle, you have to weight the the, the cycle by some rational uh, numbers. So, so this is also one way to see why uh, the virtual fundamental class is in general a rational valued um, um, fundamental class. Okay, so, so let me just uh, finish this part by, by mentioning that the, the credit uh, of all those development of uh, virtual fundamental cycles should go back to uh, Fukai, Fukai Ono, Li Tian, uh, Ran, um, Siebert, um, Pardon, and Hofer, Wizaki, Cinder, uh, Macduff, Warham, and uh, Fukai, and Ono, et cetera, et cetera. Although their um, um, settings may differ a um, um, little bit and their constructions may also differ um, um, to some degree. However, those, those, uh, the idea of a, a finite dimensional reduction is basically um, 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 included in, in all those approaches. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? All right, so so now let's uh, look at this proposal of uh, Fukai and Ono uh, uh, using uh, the so-called anomaly polynomial perturbations, and let me explain what they are. So let's look at the local picture of uh, uh, 
Franici chart and how we do perturbations. So, um, so let's consider a single chart. So remember there's a symmetry group and this symmetry group acts on this manifold U. So there will be a fixed point set. So let's assume this fixed point set is not empty. Otherwise you can just reduce the group. And also let's just consider the issue on the problem locally. So we can assume this normal bundle to the fixed point locus is trivial. So, so I draw this picture here. So this, this horizontal plane rep re uh, represents this uh, uh, space U, this manifold U, then inside there is the, um, uh, there is the uh, fixed point locus UG. So let's assume that locally the, the, the fiber of the normal bundle um, is, tri um, is, a, is a representation space V and this uh, normal bundle is trivial. So, so then locally you can identify uh, this uh, normal bundle, the tubular neighborhood of this uh, fixed point locus with the total space of the normal bundle, which is just UG times the fiber V. So then if you consider a perturbation, which is, um, which is uh, S from um, UG times V to the obstruction space W, then uh, you, can, you can identify this perturbation with a family of maps which uh, gives you the fiber-wise uh, uh, maps. Uh, and, and because we require this map is equivalent, then we can, the, the, the fiber-wise map is also an equivalent smooth map between these two uh, representation spaces. So that you can actually represent a perturbation of this um, um, original uh, map S via a family of fiber-wise uh, equivalent smooth maps between these two uh, representation spaces. So this, you can, you can think that is, this is as, uh, as, a, as, a, as a varying uh, family of map and on, on each fiber, on each fiber, the, the, the restriction will be some kind of smooth map. So then uh, let's see why equivalent transversality will fail for, for single valued perturbation. So let's look at the obstruction space and let's decompose this obstruction space into two parts. So one part W trivial is, uh, is the direct sum of trivial uh, representations of G. And W non-trivial is the direct sum of all the non-trivial uh, irreducible sub-representations. So we abbreviate these two parts as W circle and W check. So we can also write the, uh, oops. We can also write this um, um, uh, map S as W circle, uh, S circle and S check. So um, uh, one uh, uh, easy fact is that we can always do single value perturbation to make the uh, trivial part transverse. We can always do single value thing to make S circle transverse. Then we can actually reduce this chart to uh, keep the symmetry group. Well, um, um, replace the manifold U by the zero locus of the trivial part of the section and replace uh, and reduce the obstruction space to the, to the completely non-trivial part of the uh, original obstruction space and take the section to be just the non-trivial part of, uh, of the original section as all the perturbed S. So, so because of this operation, we can always assume um, for the sake of transversality, always assume that uh, this obstruction space has no trivial sub-representations. So it is direct sum of all non-trivial irreducible, sub -rep uh, irreducible representations of the group G. So then under this setting, um, 
another easy consequence is that for any equivalent uh, smooth map between these two uh, representation spaces, um, this map must vanish at the origin. So if you if you just consider all possible single value perturbation, then no matter how you perturb this, uh, this section, uh, the symmetry actually will force this fixed point locus be always contained in the zero locus of the, um, of the perturb of, of, of the perturbation. And uh, let me show this, uh, let me draw this picture here. So suppose this is U and suppose this is um, the fixed point locus so no matter how you perturb, this uh, a fixed point locus will be always contained in the zero locus, and there will be something left there, something uh, outside the the fixed point locus. So this is so. Then you can just simply see that this might uh, obstruct the uh, transversality because the dimension of the fixed point locus might be larger than your virtual dimension. And if, if you can, on the other hand, if you can achieve transversality, then you cannot have the zero locus uh, having dimension bigger than the virtual dimension. So, so this shows that uh, equivalent transversality in general will fail for single value perturbations. Is there maybe some basic borderline trivial example where we can see this dimension of UG being too big or, or explicitly? Yeah, yeah. For example, you just take a, like Z2, for example. Let's, let's just take a, um, 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 uh, the obstruction space to be, to be, um, to be um, the non-trivial representation of Z2, like a complex representation C mm -hmm. with, with a non-trivial action by Z2. And let's take the base to be to be just a, 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 a many copies of this uh, um, non-trivial representation. Then the virtual dimension is, uh, it, sorry, uh, let, let's take the, 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 the obstruction space to be many, 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 many copies of this non-trivial representation. And let's take the base, let's take the base to be just a single copy of that. Then the virtual dimension is negative. However, the origin will always be contained in the zero locus. Yes, thank you. Thanks for asking this question. So now uh, the idea of Fukan Ono is that, okay, we, we do not want to use multivariate perturbation because if we do that, then we have to use rational coefficients. So we want to just improve what we can have using single value perturbations. And, and let's see what we can obtain. Um, and there, if there are any, 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 any chance to, to actually refine the, 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 the the, the situation where, although we do not have transversality, but we can still extract something uh, useful. So, so for Han Ono's idea is that, okay, let's assume uh, uh, th there's a very crucial assumption, but this is however, uh, uh, sort of obvious uh, in the gromp witten case. Not, I mean, not exactly obvious, but expect it. That is, let's assume that the normal fiber to the fixed point locus, as well as the obstruction space are, both complex representations. In, in th that means the fiber of the normal bundle and also the obstruction space have uh, a G uh, invariant complex structure. So this is expected because the D-bar equation uh, is, is essentially complex linear. So then they propose to consider a particular kind of perturbation which uh, whose uh, fiber-wise restriction um, which is represented by this, this, uh, this plane here, is not just any smooth uh, equivalent map, but actually a uh, uh, complex polynomial equivalent maps, let's say complex. Um, and also let's choose a, a large D to, to, to set up a, a upper bound of the degree. So uh, in particular, this is a finite dimensional space. So this is like fiber wise, you only choose like finite, uh, you only have a finite degree of freedom to, to perturb your section. Okay. 
And you can see this, this uses the complex structure because you don't just consider real, real polynomial maps, you consider complex polynomial maps. Okay. So, so then they prove a very uh, important lemma, which shows that uh, in the single chart, if we choose the degree to be sufficiently large and we choose a generic uh, such uh, perturbation, which is called a normality polynomial perturbation. That is in a normal fiber to the fixed point locus, it is a polynomial map. Then there are two consequences. Um, the first one is that if you consider the zero locus and you consider the free part, which is just the zero locus intersecting the base of the uh, Kranichi chart where the action is free, then uh, this is uh, transversely cut out. So this is somehow expected because there's no uh, equivalency essentially in the free locus. And uh, more crucially is the second part. If you consider the free locus of the perturbed zero locus and you take its closure or take its boundary, the closure minus the original free, lo free part of the zero locus, then this boundary is contained in the union of submanifolds of co-dimension two or higher. Um, uh, co-dimension two means uh, this is dimension is less than or equal to the virtual dimension minus two. So this is like a pseudocycle type? Right, state. exactly. So, so then uh, let's look at this picture, what this means. So because, because we are still using single value perturbation, as I explained, this uh, fixed point set is still containing the zero locus. However, there will be the free part, which I draw as, uh, as re in red. So this is uh, away from the, so let's just pretend that there are either fixed points or free locus. There's no like intermediate uh, type of isotropies uh, for a moment. So then in the free locus, you have some smooth manifold. And so if you, if you don't look at the fixed point locus, then this free part will be uh, something smooth. But it's a boundary, which is the limiting point that hits the fixed point locus is not too big, it's, it's a small. It's, uh, its dimension is, you know, it has co-dimension two or higher. So, so this indicates that if I just consider the, if I just consider the red part, the red part uh, should give uh, something like a pseudo cycle. Well, you sort of ignore this uh, fixed point locus, which could be much bigger uh, in dimensions. So this is the idea of Fukano Ono. And uh, um, this, um, the proof essentially uses this uh, normally polynomial type perturbation and uses some um, 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 particular feature uh, coming from complex uh, algebraic geometry. So that you know, in complex algebraic geometry, um, the boundary of a variety will be have complex co-dimension at least one, so um, real, real co-dimension at least two. So this is what they, they proved uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a lemma uh, in the case of a single uh, Kranichi chart. So then they just propose this idea that, okay, so the moduli space of uh, stable maps has a kind of a normally complex Kranichi structure, which means basically all those charts has uh, all those Kranichi charts satisfy uh, the assumption that there are uh, invariant complex structures in the normal fibers as well as in the uh, obstruction spaces. Uh, and those complex structures are compatible with, with respect to those coordinate changes in the human Kranichi story. And then if you can, you, you can just use a kind of a normally polynomial perturbation on you know, this whole Kranichi uh, structure or the associated uh, good coordinate system then you should be a, you could be able to define integer value gram of winning invariants. And if you, that can be defined, you can see that those invariants will morally count curves with uh, trivial automorphism groups because you, you, you sort of throw away those points with uh, non-trivial symmetries. 
And this, you know, uh, naturally using similar type of perturbation, one should be able to define Hamiltonian floor homology in, in integer coefficients and approve the Arnold conjecture over integers. So this is the uh, proposal of Pan Ono. So, um, so, um, 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 okay, so before I move on, any questions? All right. So, uh, so now let's move on. Um, but let's look at this picture again. Um, so, from this uh, from this description of this uh, phenomena, you can see that um, it's. Um, um, it's essentially not about the, the moduli space, not about holomorphic curves. It's just some, uh, you know, how to abstractly perturb a equivalent map. And uh, uh, if, you know, if, if this could work, this should be based on some very abstract uh, topological argument. So, um, and However, there are certain difficulties in, in, in doing that. So, so the main difficulty, which is very, very technical, is that is how to uh, actually globalize uh, what Fukai and Ono proved. So what Fukai and Ono proved is that for a single chart, which has a, a, a fixed symmetry group G, you can have this um, um, a phenomenon. However, inside a moduli space, you could have uh, many pieces, many different charts, and different charts have a different uh, symmetry group. And, and that corresponds to the situation when, um, you know, locally, the aut automorphism group of curves may, may change. So uh, a, a sequence of holomorphic curves with a smaller automorphism group may converge to a stable map which has a larger hom automorphism group. So, um, so then the, the issue will be just to, 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 to actually uh, develop uh, a, a, a abstract topological story, uh, which can actually globalize what Fukan Ono um, 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 proved. So a natural a situation, natural you know, um, uh, framework is just to use orbitals rather than uh, a manifold divided by finite group. So, um, so let's uh, just set up this topological problem. Um, so let's consider an effective orbifold. Let's call it U. And let's choose a orbifold vector bundle. Um, so this orbifold doesn't have to be compact, but let's, we can choose a, a, reference connection, a reference section so that its zero locus is compact. Um, so this triple, the orbifold, the, uh, the orbifold bundle, and the reference section uh, can be called a derived orbifold chart. So you can think if S is transverse, then S inverse zero is actually an orbifold. However, in general, it, it could be singular, but in the, in the virtual or derived sense, it is somehow like an orbifold, at least topologically. I mean, like, like if you only care about like homo, you know, an information like a homology. So, so we can just work with such an uh, uh, such uh, such an object. Then, locally around any point in the zero locus, we can actually find a, a Kranichi chart of the original zero locus. So then, if we have uh, a, a relative uh, orientation of this uh, orbifold vector bundle, then classically we know we can define a, a relative or you know. Um, a rational Euler class um, uh, inside, uh, which is a homology class inside this orbifold. You know, this rational class can be just represented by the zero locus of a small uh, transverse uh, multi-value perturbation of your original reference uh, section S. And what Fukai and Ono suggested is that uh, if in addition to the orientation, there is also a complex structure, or more precisely, so-called a normal complex structure. This complex structure in the normal direction to the fixed point locus. Then there should be a different class, which is uh, an integral homology class. And this homology class should be represented by a pseudo cycle, 
uh, con which is contained in the manifold part of this orbital. And this pseudo cycle should be the zero locus of some nice single valued perturbation. So this is, this is uh, the way to actually globalize uh, what uh, Fouca and Ono suggested in the, in the, in the finite dimensional uh, uh, topological setting. Okay. Wait, so, so when, when, do you think of orbifolds as, as local quotients of manifolds or as a stack or like what, what, how? Do... This is just local, yeah, effective orbifold, just locally it's, it is like the, the uh, finite group quotient of Euclidean. Okay, so, so your manifold is the part, is the part sort of where the group is trivial. Right, exactly. Yeah. I see, thank you. Yeah, it's an open dense set inside the effective orbifold. And, and this uh, one, 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 maybe one, one remark is that if you have this normal complex structure, then one consequence is that the the complement of the uh, manifold part of the orbital will have codimension two or higher. It, it doesn't, you know, if it, it doesn't have codimension one singularity in the orbital. All right, so uh, let's just uh, assume that uh, not, you know, we don't, we, you know, let, let's not just work with this more specific normal complex structure. Let's just assume everything is just complex. The tangent bundle of the orbital is complex and also the obstruction bundle is complex. So then uh, let's just say, okay, what kind of perturbation we should consider? We should just naively consider those perturbations which locally can be uh, written uh, in this way. You just you can just use local charts to express every um, um, perturbation uh, of this form locally, which is a uh, which is a uh, uh, um, uh, GP uh, equivalent map from a manifold, uh, a local piece to to a, a representation of this uh, symmetry group, and we can decompose uh, this representation. Or the fiber of this obstruction bundle into the trivial and the non-trivial part, and the normally polynomial one are those uh, sp, which is sp circle, sp check. Well, sp check uh, is um, uh, fiber-wise polynomial. Um, complex polynomial. Let's see. So those are so-called normally polynomial perturbations. Um, so there are some other technical things we need to do. For example, the normal fiber are not uh, uh, automatically linearized. You have to, to identify the tubular neighborhood with a total space of normal bundle, and you have to do that in a compatible way. Uh, but that's purely technical. So let's don't worry about that. So, so we want to perturb those. Um, those sections so that um, this uh, non-trivial part of SP locally is uh, comes from a generic family of uh, polynomial maps. So um, let me draw the picture again, maybe. So on each fiber, on each fiber, um, it is uh, a, the the. The, the non-trivial part, the, the part that uh, maps to the, uh, the non-trivial part of the obstruction space is a, a complex polynomial map. So, so then um, we should expect that if we consider such perturbations and we consider those perturbations which are, are suffic sufficiently generic, then we should be able to produce this integral pseudo cycle. Um, but however, this genericity condition should correspond to some, some kind of uh, transversality uh, notion. And, but we know that ordinary transversality fails. So uh, we actually need some kind of uh, more dedicated version of transversality. And actually it is uh, indeed already uh, indicated or, or, or discussed in, in uh, Fukai Ono's original uh, article. So, but nonetheless, we need we need to we need to produce some some new notion of transversality to actually do uh, to do 
you know, to achieve what uh, Fukan Ono uh, uh, said. Okay, so so this is this is what we 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 need to do in the in the topological level. So now let's let me state our main result in this in this uh, in this level. So basically, we followed uh, what Fukan Ono said, and also our um, construction also is greatly inspired by a, a subsequent work of Brad Parker, uh, who was also trying to uh, work on or realize Fukan Ono's uh, idea. So we define such a, a transversality notion. So this is our theorem. So we prove that uh, there is a notion of a strong transversality for uh, normally polynomial perturbations. And this notion satisfies the following uh, conditions. So first, uh, it is uh, you know, generic ones are strongly transverse. Generic ones are strongly transverse. And, and, and we just call those uh, strongly transverse normally polynomial perturbations, uh, FOP perturbations, standing for Fukaya Ono and, and Parker. Uh, and second, if you have an FOP perturbation, then uh, you will have exactly what Fukan Ono said. Uh, if you consider such FOP perturbation, you consider it's a zero locus uh, and its intersection with the manifold part of your uh, orbifold, then this guy will be a pseudo cycle. And its homology class is actually an invariant of your original uh, derived uh, orbifold chart equipped with the normal complex structure. And this homology class is also uh, independent of the perturbation and also it is a cobordism invariant. Uh, excuse me, uh, I don't understand mathematical formulation. There is a notion. So, 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 so okay. it's, not, it's not a statement, right? So, so uh, can I read this in the following way that for generic, in some sense, nor normally normal perturbation holds the thing which is written in the second item of the theory. Right, right, but yeah, th but there is a precise definition of what what uh, what kind of a strong uh, normally polynomial perturbation is strongly transverse. But this is well, sociological. It's it's sociological statement. It's not mathematical statement that there exists a precise. Well, yeah, but if I write down the definition of strong transversality in detail, then that will be a mathematical statement. I just didn't write down the definition in detail. Mm -hmm. But conclusion with um, conclusion is that generically holds the the right. thing. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Yes. Um. Okay, uh, but 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 essentially, it is like from any uh, normally polynomial perturbation, you can produce some additional map, which is whose construction is complicated, but you can produce some additional map, and that map is uh, is transverse in the ordinary sense to something. That's the that's the definition of strong transversality. You, you, you from this section, you produce some some other map, and that other map that that uh, associated map is transverse to some some object in some different space. Okay. All right. So uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, we proved uh, in the topological level. Uh, and um, there, there are some, some, uh, some, um, uh, um, you know, some uh, implications in, in, the, in, the, in the direction of algebraic topology, especially in the, in the, in the cobordism theory of, of uh, derived orbitals. But let's, let's, today, let's focus on the application in, in sympathetic topology from now on. Um, so, so then as an application, we, we want to apply to the uh, uh, form of Witten theory, which is the simplest uh, possible situation in sympathetic topology. So, so, so one, uh, uh, one event that, that happened during our preparation is that there appeared this construction of Abzaid, MacLean, and Smith. Uh, um, um, who actually showed that for any genus zero uh, moduli space of stable maps in any compact uh, sympathetic manifold, um, this moduli space admit a complex derived orbital chart. So that means if you consider any uh, such genus zero moduli space, then you can actually cook up a complex uh, derived orbital chart such that the zero locus is uh, identified with the moduli space. 
and, and also this uh, derived orbital chart is a, is a canonical up to uh, certain natural equivalence relations, although their construction is, is pretty uh, geometric uh, very and very specific. So, so then we can just plug in this, uh, this result into the uh, abstract um, uh, um, uh, um, um, theorem we have proved um, uh, to produce this uh, uh, FOP, you know, the integral class in genus zero. But let, let me first mention that one uh, application of Abazide and McLean Smith is that they prove this, uh, this uh, so called splitting theorem uh, over integers. That is, if you consider Hamiltonian fiber bundle over S2 and the fibers are being compact symphonic manifolds, then uh, there will be this uh, splitting theorem uh, of the homology of the total space uh, into the tensor product of the homology of the sphere and the homology of the fiber uh, over integers. So, um, so this is what they, they, uh, they obtained using this uh, global chart construction. Um, okay, so back to our situation. So uh, just just to combine uh, what we did uh, in, in the in the in the abstract setting and also the construction of Abazide, McLean, and Smith. Uh, if we can just uh, consider this uh, a moduli space in Gina zero, and um, actually I should in also include this uh, stabilization map. And then you can actually. Um, hook up this um, integral homology class. Uh, which you can just cook up this FOP class on this associated uh, um, a derived orbital chart and use the evaluation and stabilization map to push forward this integral class into uh, the target as well as the Gina zero, uh, the Lee space. Uh, so this class will be a symplectic uh, invariant. Um, and using this invariant, we can just define, uh, we can just define uh, an integer, in integer version of uh, a formal gradient type invariants, uh, simply just taking uh, intersections with uh, integral cycles in the target space X, as well as the Bernie Mumford space. So, um, so this is uh, our main, um, uh, 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 application in symplectic topology uh, at this moment. And uh, let me mention that this invariant should match the usual uh, Gina zero uh, formal wind invariants uh, if the target is uh, semi-positive, because in the semi-positive case, uh, you do expect that the uh, those curves with non-trivial uh, automorphism groups, which are uh, always uh, multiple covers, actually do not contribute to the counting of the curves. Okay, so this is um, one of the uh, application in, in symplectic topology. And, and one, of, uh, one of the byproduct, sorry, uh, let, me, let, me, let me pause here to see if there's uh, questions. Okay, so if no, let's let's move on. So actually, what we uh, what we, we what we define are not just a single uh, uh, invariant or single uh, cycle. We actually uh, constructed a series a series of invariants. So let's just consider not uh, any finite group. So if you have any finite group, then you can consider this locus inside the uh, orbifold which is the set of points, um, the set of points whose isotropic group is your giving subgroup, uh, giving finite group gamma. So this could be empty or could be non-empty. Um, but nonetheless, it's, this guy is, uh, let me mention that, let me, let me comment that U gamma is a manifold. So then if we consider a, an FOP perturbation, remember it's a, it's a, it's a generic um, uh, normally polynomial perturbation and you consider the zero locus and you intersect with this locus in the orbifold, 
of points with this uh, uh, isotropic group gamma, then we also prove that this guy is also a pseudocycle. And if you consider the, 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 the homology class represented by this pseudocycle, then you can push forward this class to a, a homology class inside the target uh, x to the nth power and the W Mumford space. And we call this uh, uh, um, uh, FOP, uh, homo FOP uh, class of this, uh, sorry, I forgot this bar. FOP class of this genus zero moduli space labeled by this finite group gamma. And, and the most importantly, it is a, a integral homology class. And, and if you do intersection theory with cycles, oops, then you should get a uh, counts of curves with uh, automorphism group isomorphic to gamma. And this will be uh, integer counts. So, so, so then what follows is that you could expect that uh, all those integer counts for, for curves with all possible finite uh, automorphism groups should actually combine together to give your, to, to give your you know, um, original uh, form of weight invariants, which are uh, in general rational values. So, so then there will be a, a very vague conjecture, which we propose here. That is, um, um, let me just see here. This is your uh, integer counts. So then your original gram of weight invariants uh, in any genus, uh, any degree, which is a rational number, should be a uh, weighted uh, combination of those integer counts of uh, sorry, my, my notation is a little bit uh, complex here. So your, your original gram of weight invariance should be a weighted combination of all those integer counts where the weights, uh, W gamma, is some rational numbers. And which uh, should be, you know, um, Responsible. Okay, how much? How much? Um, 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 those rational weights should be uh, able to be expressed in terms of some classical uh, topological, you know, characteristic class. So, uh, so this is uh, this is a big conjecture that relating the original uh, form of weighting variants with this uh, newly, you know, with this uh, type of integer counts. Although we only defined a genus zero case so far. Do you have maybe an example where you can sort of say something more specific about this W? Well, uh, so if you have a like very explicit orbifold and orbital vector bundle, you you could actually write down such a such a such a decomposition. So you should expect, in the case of just a, a moduli space, you should have the same type of uh, decomposition. So, for example, if you have uh, the simplest orbifold, let's say like an orbifold P one with just one simple um, uh, orbifold point, and you have like some orbifold line bundle, then, then in general, you have a rational Euler number, right? Yeah. It's like, a, for example, if you just take the, the, the tangent bundle to the orbital P1, then that should, that should be one plus the, the order of this orbifold point, or one, over, one over K basically. And the decomposition will be just one is, is the one is the the, the, there will be, will be two part. One is from the the the, the where the, the finite group is trivial that gives you one, which is the FOP class for the trivial group, and then then there will also be the a, a one from this uh, FOP class for this non-trivial automorphism group. But now you have to wait by this uh, this uh, basically the order of the symmetry group there. So you will have this. Uh, 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 the rational Euler number equals to a combination of integers with some proper rational weights. I see. But it will be good if we actually have an explicit uh, 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 synthetic manifold and uh, an, you know, an, uh, explicit and detailed decomposition of the ordinary form with invariance into those integers. That would be much better. Thank you. Okay. All right. So. Um, so now let's put some remarks here. 
So, uh, so a, a, as a byproduct, we also reproved uh, Abzaid McLean Smith's results about the splitting of the homology of the, the Hamiltonian vibration over sphere. And our method uh, doesn't use uh, doesn't use a generalized cohomology theory. Um, and we also do expect that the gram weighting axioms for Gina zero, such as the WDVV equation or quantum cohomology, can be verified for this uh, new invariant. Uh, and the third, I, uh, we believe that it is straightforward to define uh, quantum Steenroth operations because the Steenroth operation requires integer counts of curves, which uh, was, uh, you know, is uh, in general uh, impossible using the, the classical technique. And this will uh, this will extend the uh, the existing construction in the monotone case by by Seidel and Wilkins. Um, so. Um, and, and now let's comment that our construction actually needs smooth Kranichi structures. Um, um, we, we, so far we cannot do things purely topologically. We do need smooth structures. And that's why we have to use uh, Abazai to McLean Smith's construction, which actually produces a, a, a smooth structure on the global chart with a relatively simple uh, technology uh, involved. Um, um, but uh, if we can actually uh, produce smooth structures on all possible modulized spaces, then the definition of all those integer counts will be basically automatic, even, even if you don't have a smooth uh, global chart, even if you, you only have like a, a local charts and the patch together as in a Kranichi structure uh, situation. So, so lastly, let's say if we can just construct a smooth Kranichi structures on, on all modulized space of, of floor trajectories, then then we should be able to define an integer version of Hamiltonian on floor homology and, and approve the Arnold conjecture over Z. Um, however, this is much more complicated because we need to handle uh, not just a single moduli space, but uh, uh, essentially infinite many moduli spaces uh, at the same time. So, um, but, but the idea is that if you can do that, then this construction will be automatic. So um, um, any questions before I move on to the last three minutes? Okay, so, so now let, let, let me talk about this transversality condition. Um, hopefully I can uh, tell you what, uh, what's happening um, uh, in detail. So, so let's still uh, look at, uh, let, let's see what is the notion of a strong transversality here. So let's look at a single Kranichi chart, which you have a U, a finite group acting on this manifold U, you have an obstruction space, you have a section. And we also make this simplifying uh, assumption that W contains no non-trivial uh, no trivial summand. Then um, remember U has a fixed point locus and uh, the normal fiber is a copy of V. So then we consider this variety, this variety Z, which you can call the universal zero set. It depends on the degree D. So it is just the set of all points V in the normal fiber V together with a polynomial map such that its value, which is a vector in W is zero. So this guy is a uh, algebraic variety, it's affine variety, something uh, inside a vector space. Um, and, and you can consider the free part of this uh, affine variety, which is just uh, uh, this variety inside of where the, 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 the action on the normal fiber is free. So this is an open set. And because, so, so this is also not just open in the, in the Euclidean sense, this is actually a Zariski open set because you just remove some subspace from this, uh, from this uh, whole vector space. So if this is a Zariski open set, then this closure uh, or its boundary is a union of uh, algebraic varieties, uh, algebraic sets of co-dimension, let's see, real co-dimension, co-dimension two or higher. So basically we use this sort of uh, structure associated to this uh, variety Z to cook up, to define this strong transversality. 
So let's recall some basic results in, 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 in top differential topology. So, so Tom uh, uh, Whitney and Laura Savage basically prove that if you have a complex algebraic variety um, and a, a, a smooth complex algebraic variety and some uh, sub variety, which may not be smooth, then you can actually uh, decompose this uh, possibly singular uh, sub variety into uh, smooth pieces. And this decomposition satisfies the Whitney conditions. And this is called a Whitney stratification. And if the variety is algebraic, then the decomposition, the pieces of the decomposition will be smooth algebraic sets. So what we need to do is actually to refine uh, this classical theorem by, uh, uh, by uh, Tom Whitney and Laura Savage, which is that let's consider this uh, uh, um, um, a variety Z uh, defined specifically. So we want to have a Whitney stratification uh, into, um, into a smooth uh, algebraic set, but also this decomposition should respect the group action. So we actually cook up some canonical Whitney stratification on this uh, uh, variety Z. Um, and uh, let me say that there are infinitely many possible Whitney stratifications, but only the canonical one will have very nice uh, uh, functorial uh, property. So basically, uh, basically we can define uh, this family of uh, uh, polynomial maps to be strongly transverse if there is a so associated map into this V times the space of polynomial maps. And if the associated space, uh, the, uh, the associated map is transversal to, to every stratum of this uh, variety Z. So this is the precise definition of strong transversality. And basically using the property of Whitney stratification, you can see all those features of those, sets, let's say co-dimension two boundary um, type uh, conclusion. Um, Sorry, what is associated map? Okay, so let me see, let me erase here. So if you have a, 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 a F, which is a fiber-wise polynomial map, right? So then you can just, uh, you can just define F, F of V uh, X, to be uh, fx, uh, which is a polynomial map evaluating on v. So fx is a map from v to w. Or it's like an evaluation map associated to this uh, fiber-wise polynomial map. Cool. Okay, so so yeah, so this uh, if this associated map is transversal to to this singular set, which means transversal to every stratum uh, with respect to this uh, canonically associated Whitney stratification, then we call this original fiberwise polynomial map a strongly transverse uh, object. So so then basically you can see all those co-dimension two uh, boundary uh, phenomena here. Then that's a sort of uh, 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 easier part of the consequence. And the difficult part of the of this this construction is that we have to uh, make sure that this notion is compatible with many other operations. First is that if you just increase the uh, allowed uh, cutoff degree of a fiberwise polynomial map. So if it is transverse for 1D, whether the, 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 the same map is also strongly transverse for a larger degree D because the variety Z depends on your giving uh, uh, your chosen uh, integer D. And, and another part is that if you have a, a fiber-wise polynomial map, then suppose your group has some, some subgroup which has some uh, larger fixed point locus, then, then you, can, you can actually, if you have a fiber-wise agrarian map with respect to a larger symmetry group, and then you can, you can actually produce an associated uh, map with which is uh, equivalent with respect to a smaller subgroup, and and you need to actually um, prove that uh, when you translate from a, a, a larger symmetry group to a smaller symmetry group, then the naturally uh, uh, descendant descent uh, uh, a fiberwise polynomial map is automatically strongly transverse. 
And that is where we need to use um, the special property of this canonical witness stratification, not just arbitrary witness stratification. If you use arbitrary witness stratification, you do see those co-dimension two boundary phenomena. However, um, you don't have this naturality of this uh, of those um, um, uh, when you do these transitions between uh, different uh, symmetry groups. Okay, so um, so actually this is why this is why we need this uh, uh, special uh, uh, canonical witness stratification, not just arbitrary witness stratification. So let me just uh, um, uh, uh, fi fi finish with those remarks. So so basically, Brad Parker. Uh, Considered when when he considered this for kind of Ono's proposal, he actually introduced a class of nice with stratifications, and, and and he found a way to to relate uh, nice nice stratifications for for different for the variety Z for different degree and the symmetry group. But what uh, he didn't do is that he didn't uh, actually provide a, a way to to choose nice with stratifications which are not necessarily canonical. And also not provide enough details for constructing those global transverse perturbations with his version of Kranich's structure. And what we did on the technical level is actually we modified Parker's method, and we actually uh, 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 choose a canonical within the stratification so that we actually, um, you know, in one in one sentence, our strong transversality condition is intrinsic. That is independent of the Cut off degree D, and also uh, it is uh, it is an open condition which can allows you to to cook up perturbations from local to global. Okay, so um, so um, okay, so I guess I can stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? So maybe uh, could you please repeat uh, once again? So why your uh, invariants uh, are defined over Z and not Q? So so at which point you are winning? Okay, so 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 basically we use single value perturbation. So there's no branches of perturbation. So in, in uh, the classical gram witten when you define using perturbations, you have to use multi-value perturbation. So that, for example, if the index is zero. Then, if you, you your perturbation has like two branches, then each branch may have zeros, but each zero should not contribute to one or negative one, but only contribute to one half or negative one half. So that's why usually you get rational numbers. But this in, in this method we purely use single value perturbation. So you get, for example, in 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 the case when the index is zero. You, you do have those zeros, you do have the zeros and each zero, each transverse zero will actually contribute one or negative one. If you have a um, higher index case, then you have actually a, a single branched uh, a cycle, a pseudo cycle, which support a integral homology class. But this single value perturbation uh, is not transverse in the ordinary sense. But because of we have this normal polynomial uh, complex structure, and uh, uh, you, the, what Foucault and Ono uh, suggested is that although it is not transverse in the usual sense, but you can actually throw away those zeros in the in the places where you have non you have non-trivial automorphism groups, you only consider those zeros inside the free locus and. This part is itself a pseudo cycle. Thank you. I would like to ask another question, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. So, my knee jerk reaction is to think about open ground with theory, and a lot of yes. your argument here was rooted in the fact that things can be complex and so you get pseudocycles and so on. How much of the argument still pulls through if you can have co-dimension one phenomena? Mm. Does anything still work? I think one, uh, so, um, so I think in the real case, you might have like uh, some, you know, like the group Z2 involved, 
where the Z2 action, you, you have some representation of, of Z2 involved, but the, but the representation is not complex, but the real, but like the non-trivial real rep representation of Z2 will come into play. And I think mm, one might have to uh, extend those, uh, you know, this, uh, this scheme to include not an like arbitrary real um, situation, but like just uh, you you in the group may have like a Z two factor where the the in the Z two factor the representation may have this non trivial uh, real representation part. Um, I think that 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 is what um, one should um, consider. Um, so that means maybe maybe the um, the um, the um, the the, um, the normal complex structure um, um, is not there maybe or oh, but but it's also but still it's possible to to still do single value perturbation um, in that case um, because somehow um, um, you You know, basically those boundaries somehow when you when you when you have invariance, basically that, that's the case when when those 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 uh, the, those boundary cancel each other, right? So, so um, and and I think the multiple cover issue is like uh, orthogonal to that, uh, uh, you know, the, the co-dimension one boundary issue. This this uh, multiple cover or like like automorphism groups which are which are non-trivial is sort of coming from the, those holomorphic spheres. So, right, but this is, I thought the multiple cover issues more sort of would relate closer to say the Google Marvafa decomposition rather to your formula. Right, right, I, 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 but I think it's also both, well, they are, they are something different, but I think both of them are, are caused by holomorphic spheres, not holomorphic disks. Huh. I guess yeah, so, so, right. So with, with the thing with this is like even even say in the in the semi-positive case, you would not expect integers, but you can you can make do with probably so if if the situation is exactly that that that's let's say you have an antisymplectic involution and your Lagrangian is a fixed locus of that, you expect an integer divided by a power of two. Does that correlate to what you say about adding the Z2 argument or is it maybe um, a different phenomenon? But if you have to use a multi-valued perturbation, then, yeah. then, uh, then that, that rational factor is basically the, the, the order of the group, right? One over the order of the group, right? So, so you, you, I think if that's the case, then it's, it's possible to, you know, basically uh, break down your perturbation uh, process into two stages. First is to use single value perturbation mm -hmm. to, to separate the locus and the contributions from of curves with different automorphism groups. And then um, why you get, why you get uh, those uh, uh, rational numbers uh, in the ordinary case is that because uh, if you have a contribution from curves with non-trivial automorphism group, then you have to do additional multi-value perturbation to achieve transversality for those those locus. Um, so I, I think, a, well, I I, I feel a, a you know of course technically it could be very difficult, but uh, right. in theory it, should, it, should, it, it might work. So if I understand correctly, the bottom line is you, you expect it should still be possible to use a single valued perturbation. And then we may still end up having rational numbers, but the reason will be only that sort of intrinsic issue of having a disk in the reverse of the sphere and not the automorphisms because the automorphism issue you kill off by using a single valued. Yes, yes. Um, um, if I understand correctly, yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, more questions. Okay, then maybe let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>